There are two schools of thought when mixing music in Dolby Atmos. One thought is to make the best immersive mix on speakers and ignore the headphone settings. The other one is to make the best headphone mix and ignore the speaker settings. In this video, I'm gonna show you how they're both equally important and gonna explain how the binaural settings work when mixing music in Dolby Atmos. This is Alex with Alex Pro Mix. Let's go. Hey, what's up guys? This is Alex with Alex Pro Mix. You've tuned in to your favorite channel on mixing and mastering all things in stereo and Dolby Atmos. And uh, in this video, we really want to take some time to show you like how the Dolby Atmos binaural settings work. And uh, a lot of you guys who have signed up for the private coaching, I've gone through this over and over. So I figured, you know what? Let me just create a video of uh, something that everyone can benefit from. All right, so first of all, what are the binaural settings? How does it work? Does it matter? What's immersive mixing? Let's get some basic concepts down before we dive into some technical stuff, okay? Immersive mixing or spatial mixing is the process of mixing a song where you can place instruments in a 3D environment. And so the idea is to replicate that experience when you switch over to headphones. And that's why the Dolby Atmos binaural settings are super important to give the user the headphone experience that a mixer experiences in the room. All right, so with that out of the way, let's jump in to some examples. Okay, cool. So awesome production. Uh, the vocals are muted so I can talk over the music. But right now you're hearing this mix in stereo. Even though I'm sending it to the Dolby Atmos renderer, I have nothing panned, you know, in the surround channels. Everything's panned left and right. And my binaural settings are off. So if you're hearing this on headphones, which you should for the rest of this video, this just sounds like a stereo mix. Nothing wrong with that. So how did the binaural settings work and when did they come into play? And, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. All right, so there's a plugin called the Dolby Atmos Binaural Settings. And this is basically a remote control for this application, which is a standalone application. If you're working in Pro Tools, Pro Tools is a standalone DAW, a digital audio workstation. The Dolby Atmos Render is a standalone application. They communicate with each other. And this plugin allows me to remote control the settings that uh, take place over there in the Dolby Atmos Render for the purpose of creating a spatial audio or binaural audio, however you want to call it, mix that translates on headphones. This right here is super important because me, myself as a mixer, like I want to number one, I, I want to do a few things, all right? When somebody hires me to do a mix for Atmos, there's a couple of things. Here's like my posture, okay? Like, you know, like I'm not putting up any fronts or anything like that. Like the gloves are off, all right? This is my posture. Number one, I want to pre preserve the initial uh, uh, creative ideas of the music mixer, of the mastering engineer. I want to preserve that tonality that they work so hard to achieve and that the client is super satisfied with, whether it's the label or whether it's the artist. They're both equally important. So for one thing, I'm not going to build a new mix and say, hey, look, this is better. No, like that's completely wrong. All right. So number one rule for mixing Atmos is like, don't reinvent the mix. Like, preserve the tonality that they already approved. Secondly, I want to future-proof the Dolby Atmos mix so it sounds awesome on speakers. So that if another mix engineer, another pro mixer, uh, plays my mix, my song on, on, on their Atmos rig, they're going to be like, wow, this is cool. This, this sounds awesome, right? Like, I want to future-proof it. And as more technologies come on board with smart speakers, with in sound bars with car manufacturing audio, then like I want to future proof that mix. And yet I want to be able to give everyone else who can't experience the Dolby Atmos mix on speakers who are only able to experience it on headphones. I want to give them that same experience as close as possible to what I'm deciding in the room. So my posture, my, my, my position as a mixer, as, as a service provider, if you will, is to 
preserve the integrity, the creative integrity intent of the, of the musician, of the producer, and to create a future-proof version of this mix that can live for many years. All right, let's jump back into this technical spec stuff. Okay, so here we have this plugin called the Dolby Atmos Binaural Settings. And here's where I decide, okay, if I pan something towards the front of this wall, for example, do I want it to sound near? Do I want it to have some room emulation? Do I want it to have a lot of room emulation? Or do I want it to be completely dry? And that's what this is right here, okay? So as a general rule, this, these are the settings that I'll use and I'll use for the rest of this uh, example. Left, center, right, left, right, center is gonna be set to off. So that means that I can take any sound and pan it left and right, um, and you're not gonna hear any kind of binaural effect, okay? In fact, let's find something that's percussive and do exactly that. All right, so let's check out this hi-hat, and all I'm gonna do is just pan it left and right, and you're not gonna hear any binaural settings, any room simulation, anything like that. Okay, and the reason that sounds dry is because my binaural settings, which I'll leave this window up for you guys, my binaural settings is basically, there we go, it's set to off, okay? Because I want the drums in the front, I want the vocals in the front, I want percussions in the front of the mix on speakers, and when I hear it on headphones, I don't want any kind of room simulation. Because when I start adding room sim or binaural, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and forth, binaural slash room simulation, it starts changing the tonality of, of, of the instrument, with which for percussive instruments, it's not the best results, in my opinion. You guys can have your own opinion, but that's my opinion. All right, so this right here where it says left side and right side are set to near. So that basically means, let's try something else. Let's try a different kind of percussion. Let's try these snaps right here. So these snaps are gonna sound dry as long as I pan them left and right. But the moment I start panning them to these side, channels or these side speakers, you're going to hear a little bit of the uh, room simulation because that's set to near. Watch, check it out. So as you can hear on headphones, as long as I stick to this front wall, left, center, right, then there's no room simulation, it sounds dry. But the moment I start bringing in using the surround panner to these side channels, because this is set to near, I'm gonna start bleeding in a little bit of the room simulation, okay? Now the rear channels, left rear and right rear are set to mid, so you're gonna hear even more room simulation. And then lastly, far, which are set for the uh, top channels, when I increase the height, you're gonna hear even more room simulation. So if you visualize this panner, this area right here, the front wall is dry. This is set to near. As I pan it to the back, it's set to uh, mid. And as I raise the height, it's gonna be set to far. And another way to view that is by showing this little theater thing right there. Okay, cool. So pay attention to that, here we go. And again, we're just gonna focus on this one instrument. Okay, and let's go ahead and open up the uh, height channels. So hopefully you guys can hear what happens to a sound when you pan it in this room, in this bed, with the binaural settings intact. So just as a general rule, like this is a pretty good starting point if I'm gonna be mixing using beds. Now, when do you wanna break this rule? Let me show you. All right, so let's find something else. So right now, like everything is just basically pan left and right, but let's say that we wanted to pan something in front of us, but we wanted to give it the effect that it's coming uh, further away. So let's find uh, some of the instruments. So we have clap loops. We have uh, this one right here. Let's check this one out. Cool, so I think this is a good candidate for being able to use the binaural settings on FAR. However, I can't do it by using the surround panner because as long as it's over here somewhere in the front, it's basically following this rule right here that anything that's panned to these front channels is binaural settings set to off. So how do we break that rule? 
Well, that's when objects come in. The way we break that rule, first of all, let me go ahead and show you objects, and it's turned off, is by using an object. In this case, we're going to use a pair of objects because these are two channels, and I'm just going to choose any arbitrary number. Let's go with 39 and 40. Okay. And I'm going to enable object. So now when I look at the panner, let's go to 39 and 40. And here, anything that's panned to object or assigned to object 39 and 40 can break that rule. Remember, as long as I'm using the bed, it's following the binaural settings from the bed. But if I choose an object, in this case, 39 and 40, then I can choose whatever binaural settings I want and pan it anywhere that I want. So it breaks that law, which is great. So now we're going to take this instrument right now set to off. Okay, and let's go ahead and change that too far. So because that object pair is set too far, now I can pan it anywhere that I want and it's going to retain the uh, far binaural settings. Okay. Now, what does mid, near, far mean anyways? Okay, let's go back here. The best way that I can explain it, and this is what I do in my coaching sessions, is off, like I said, no binaural setting, no room simulation setting. You can, in fact, set everything to off and then just pan your mix and balance your mix and it's going to sound like a stereo mix. It's not going to sound like a binaural or spatial audio mix. When you set this to near, it gives the effect of like adding a room reverb on the channel set to like 5% wet. When it's set to mid, same thing, room reverb plugin set to maybe 10 or 15% wet. And then far, it's like 20%, 30% wet. So by using a combination of the bed, by using the surround panner and panning things in the room, you're going to be able to translate those distances on headphones. But if you want to break away from that rule, like if I want to pan something to the front, but this is set to off, that's when you use an object. And then here on the object settings, you can use whatever setting you want near, mid, or far. Now, this sounds like a lot, but you know what? When you start practicing it, it just becomes second nature. And typically my workflow at this stage, um, after having done quite a bit of mixes in Atmos, is number one, I match the, the tonality of the stereo master. Remember, my position as a mixer is not to like change the mix, it's to preserve the uh, integrity of the mix and the producer, but then create an awesome immersive mix experience. So my first step is to match the tonality of the master. Secondly, I get the best possible mix in my room. Like, I mean, that bass is hitting, you know, like those percussives, percussions are flying or whatever I need to do, right? Then I go to headphones and I check, okay, how close does the headphone mix sound to the stereo master? Is there an instrument that's too loud? Is there an instrument that's not loud enough? Am I missing a stem, right? Then that's where I decide, okay, these instruments should be set to off because I don't want them to have any room simulation or any binaural effect because it changes too much the tonality of the original intent. And these other instruments I'm going to set too far. Maybe they're pads. Um, maybe I want to do some panning effects and you can't hear any panning effects on headphones unless you have binaural settings set to near, mid or far. And so there's these little tips and bits like as you get to practicing and you, you, you develop your chops, that you begin to figure out, okay, this works on this, this works on that, this works on headphones, this works on speakers. But it does take practice. So if you guys are new to Dolby Atmos mixing or you have some experience on using the Dolby Atmos renderer, hopefully this is a really clear explanation for you on how to configure your binaural settings, number one. And secondly, when you can break away from that rule by using objects. So again, thanks again for watching. My name is Alex here with Alex Pro Mix. The purpose of this channel is to educate and inform you guys on new technologies, on mixing and mastering, whether you're a novice or whether you're experienced. I hope my channel brings a lot of value to you. If you love the tutorials, but you want more in-depth teachings, I invite you to visit alexpromix.com for courses, also for private coaching lessons. And if you're a music mixer or producer and you only want to deal with stereo, but you need somebody that you can trust and rely on for the Dolby Atmos, you can find rates available on my website. So again, thanks again so much for your time and for watching. As always, please feel free to leave the comments below. I always check them and I try my best to answer them. So thanks again so much. I'll see you again real soon. Peace.